Hello and welcome to the Trinity Fit Over 40 podcast with me, Rob Burkhead. Today's podcast is the second in a series of interviews with our team here at Trinity. We now have a team of over 15 and in today's episode, it's an interview with Dave, who's been working with Trinity for close to three years. Dave started as our first full-time coach and has progressed quickly to becoming a key member of the Trinity management team. His current role is coaching team leader, meaning he manages our team of six expert coaches, including training, mentoring, and guiding them to provide the best possible experience and achieve the best possible results for our 530 plus private coaching clients. Now, it would be a bit weird for me to interview Dave as effectively his boss, even though I wouldn't ever use that term. So one of our clients, Abby, actually interviewed Dave for us. So in today's episode, you'll learn how Dave got into personal training and coaching whilst traveling around the world, including managing one of Australia's largest gyms before settling in Valencia, Spain, where he is now with his partner. You'll also learn how he found the role at Trinity and his progression through the ranks over the last three years, as well as the best and worst parts of his day, his guilty pleasures, and what he believes are keys to success as a client inside of our Fit Over 40 private coaching program. Now, as a quick note, the connection was a little bit glitchy near the beginning and the audio drops out a little bit, but it does get better and it does improve for the rest of the episode. So please do persevere or skip ahead if it's really, really annoying you. It's another great episode. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode with our coaching team leader, Dave. Well, um, hello. Uh, I guess I'm kind of host. Uh, I know Rob does a little intro, um, but I will uh, give us a start as well. So I'm Abby. I've uh, been a member of Trinity for nearly a year now, and um, I had the great delight of interviewing Rob and Ben uh, a little while ago to see uh, how they ended up um, creating Trinity and their vision and, and lots of interesting things about them. Uh, and then I got to talk to Laura, who uh, is one of the Trinity coaches, uh, who's now on maternity leave, but uh, was my coach before she went away. Um, and we had a lovely chat about her very interesting past before she came to Trinity and some of the things that she finds most rewarding about her job. Uh, and so now here we are with Dave, um, who Hello. I've uh, met on coaching calls. Uh, he's been covering for Danny. Um, and uh, we are going to have a chat today. Uh, a lot of the same questions because I think they're interesting questions. Just it's good to hear the different takes on them, uh, but some extra ones as well because um, there are other things to find out about you. So that'll be exciting. So uh, if you're good to go, oh, I'm good uh, to go. should oh, yeah. we um, yeah. get started? Okay. So the blind date question always at the start. So who are you and where do you come from? Well, I'm Dave. I come from Rotherham, um, so South Yorkshire, but it's been a long time since I've lived there, about 10 years since I lived there permanently now. So I'm based in Spain. I live in Valencia. My partner's Valencian. And we met about six and a half years ago now, and that's when we were both living in Australia. And I was there for about seven years prior to being in Spain, mainly on the Gold Coast for about five years. But I did spend a couple of years near Melbourne as well um, before I decided it was too cold, too much like England, especially in the winter. <laughs> and then I moved up to the Gold Coast where it's summer the whole year, a bit like Valencia. So, <laughs> Brilliant. Wow. So uh, a little bit of globe trotting. That's cool. Um, so where, So you've lived in Rotherham and Australia and now Valencia. Is there anywhere else or, or is that your kind of three main experiences? Um, I did do a fair bit of traveling, backpacking as well, sort of 10 years ago around uh, Europe and Southeast Asia, South America. Um, and I also did a couple of uh, longer stints in certain places. I did a full ski season. Um, this is going back quite a while now, but uh, did six months in, in France in the Alps. Um, and I also did two summers of Camp America. Both of those were in the Pocono Mountains, which was about an hour and a half west of New York, two hours north of Philly, working on a summer camp uh, as a lifeguard. And uh, they were both for about three or four months and then traveling after. So I, I got around a bit. Yeah, that was my, my sort of intention for quite a while, was just to go to as many places as I could and uh, try and get away with it for as long as I could. <laughs> 
was that do you think that was um did that have anything to do with growing up in Rotherham? Do you think that's what inspired you to travel as widely as you have? Quite possibly. <laughs> I do enjoy going back, though, mainly just for the football. My dad's still there. Um, I've just got one brother, and he doesn't live there. He's he's a bit of a globe trapper as well. He lives in Vietnam. Um, but, yeah, quite possibly. There's not a lot to do there. <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, it, it's yeah. So um, yeah, could have had something to do with it, but just I've just always been interested in travel, really, in other places. Okay. So um, one of the things that uh, I thought was really interesting was I asked if there is anything you would especially like to be asked, and you came up with this question, which I think is really fascinating, about how the perception of health and fitness differs in Spain to, I guess, to the UK and maybe to other places that you've lived and worked. Mm, yeah. Well, I think um, activity-wise, it, with it being more of an outdoor lifestyle, that probably does tend to lead to more people or, you know, a greater percentage of people keeping active because, of course, as we know, when the sun's shining, it's a lot easier to, to go out and, and get our steps in or, or do some sport outside or even, you know, some, some kind of weight exercise, like a, uh, a boot camp session or something like that outside. It's all a lot more pleasurable. Um, we're all wearing a bit less as well. We're not, <laughs> we're not got the, you know, five coats on like we would in, in Yorkshire. So um, we can be seen a bit more, I suppose. Maybe that has something to do with it. Who knows? Maybe that, maybe there's a bit of a combination of a few things, but I do think generally speaking, well, Valencia itself is, they, they call it the city of running. The, it's a really, really good place to run because it's extremely flat. So a lot of uh, half marathon, marathon records are set here or, or are very close to, to being set here. So a lot of people do run, but it was similar on the Gold Coast as well. A lot of people really like to keep fit um, through, through being outside. And I think that ties in a little bit to the diet side of things as well. Now, I have to say, it's not all good because one thing that uh, if we ever tried to launch Trinity in Spain that they'd really struggle with is keeping off the bread because it is like every single meal. In fact, my partner's parents, they have a they buy a baguette each per day and they have it like, you know, because they'll do themselves, you know, like a third of it for toast in the morning. Then a bit more will come out with whatever they're having for lunch. Then it'll come out again in the evening. And they go through like a baguette each every day. Now they're actually not in bad shape, amazingly, but um, there are these differences, of course, with with the diet as well. Positives, I think, fresh food. You know, there's a lot of really good fresh produce, whether it be your veggies, whether it be your, your you know your meat, your fish, anything. Um, in fact, one story I read a little while back was when I can't remember if it was Lidl or Aldi, but when one of them launched in Spain. They weren't very successful for the first few months because they didn't have a lot of fresh stuff. It was a lot of sort of stuff on the shelves, tins, you know, stuff in packages. And they had to change their approach a little bit to get people through the door. They had to actually expand their section of, of fresh stuff compared to, to where they, they, they might have in other countries because that's what people were looking for. So I think that is, that is a winner. Um, just have to watch out for the bread. I think there's um yeah there's a, a a lot of fresh local produce and and a culture of cooking things from scratch that is possibly quite different in quite a lot of places um especially when they've got if you're near the coast or anything like that where there's fresh fish coming in every day and it, it's quite different to what we're used to I think here where everything's pre-packaged and um you know even the fresh stuff they're, they're taking out the fish counters and the meat counters out of supermarkets. So you've not got access to that, those sort of butchery skills and those supplies of fresh ingredients in the way that we used to. So mm. I can imagine that is quite different. Um, so I kind of get the impression from the, the things that you said you've done that you've, you've been working in and around fitness type activities or certainly very active type roles for quite some time. Um, how did you end up working 
with Rob and Ben? How did you end up in Trinity? Well, I'd just come off the back of, again, I'd been on the Gold Coast for five years. I'd worked at a, a big fitness centre there, um, personal training, managing the gym as well. Um, one that was, it was originally built for the um, Sydney Olympics as a training venue for the Sydney Olympics. And then because the Gold Coast had the Commonwealth Games in 2018, um, I started there, it must have been about 2015, 2016. It was, a, it was all a big build up to that. It got fully renovated again for that. And we had some of our real top athletes staying there. Um, Jamaican sprint team were there. Australian athletics were there because there was accommodation on site as well. So it was a fantastic uh, role. Um, but obviously then moving to uh, to Spain with Alba, with, with my partner, it, I didn't have anything to bring with me. It wasn't, I mean, I did have a, a few personal training clients still on board, but I was never going to do those long distance. So I had a, a, a clean slate, so to speak. And what I really wanted to do was work within a team. I really didn't want to um, sort of start from scratch again, <laughs> because especially in personal training, and I know because I've done it a couple of times that it's hard graft, especially at the start when you when you're initially building up your client base, and uh, that was something I was going to try and avoid at all costs. Um, and I just came across, came across the role, really. I was looking um, on UK job sites. I was looking on Spanish job sites. I was, yeah, I was looking at a, a bit of everything. And I was really hoping, really hoping that I could find something that was still tied with, with health and fitness. Because as you say, you know, that's what I've been doing for 10, 15 years. I didn't, really didn't want to have to get a job, especially when we came here, like I've just turned 30 just to, for the sake of it, to tie me over for a year or two because of potentially because of the language barrier or something like that, you know, which I, obviously I would have done if it, if it came to it. But so I was very fortunate from that point of view that, um, that this opportunity presented itself with Trinity, um, which at the time was just Rob and Ben and uh, Yaz, who uh, works on the sales and marketing side. So it was, you know, it was a very small <laughs> uh, back team, really. Uh, I think that there may be someone else um, doing some admin stuff as well, but certainly compared to, to, you know, the coaching team that we have now, it was quite different. And it just, it just when I was reading the, even the, the initial ad, I thought this is, this is ideal, not just because of like the logistics of it, but because of the client base that, uh, Trinity was focusing on and that I'd found that I was gravitating and working more and more with that client base myself in the last couple of years that I was um, in Australia. So all my personal training had gone more from a range of clients to working much more with women over 40 to the extent where I'd done things like got my Pilates qualifications because it was um, something that I felt fitted really well with the clients that I was working with. And I wanted something that I could pair with, with, with our um, gym sessions um, that would be a nice uh, sort of counter that quite nicely. So it just really, yeah, it ticked all the boxes. It was one of them where you see it and you think that, like, they've written it for me, honestly. Uh, it, it, it was like that. And obviously, it was fortunate that um, they they liked me, <laughs> and uh, I got through the interviews, and and, uh, and here we are, coming up to three years now, and uh, still going strong, I think. Right. <laughs> so that's a huge change in three years to go from basically four of you to a coaching team of fifteen now. Yeah, that's enormous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's. That's an exciting side of it, though, because I do enjoy the business side of things as well. I mean, I, I, I definitely, of course, I enjoy the, the client side of things. And, and now I split about half my time still training clients, uh, coaching clients one to one and about the other half of time um, taking care of the team and, and helping them out. Oh. And I do enjoy and, and, and the business development side. And I do enjoy that as well which I know is not for everyone. And, and well, in fact, I know online and remote isn't for everyone. I know a lot of uh, people get into the health fitness industry so that they're not sat on a computer and behind a desk <laughs> all day. Um, and, and they, you know, they want, you want to be out on the gym floor and training. 
and, and not have any, anything to do with that admin, you know, the numbers side. But I, I enjoy that side as well. So I get a really good variety, really, within, within my role um, as, the, as the coaching team leader. That's my fancy title. Um, it's, it's, it's spot on, really. So, I get, so, as I say, I get the, the best of both sides of it now. Who's harder to look after, the coaching clients or the coaches? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I'm going to have to come up with my politician's answer on that one. Oh, okay. I'm going to speak to the <laughs> clients because I reckon more clients will listen to this than coaches. Although the coaches, now, when they found out that Laura did one of the podcasts, they all said, oh, we're going to make sure we listen to that episode. So I'm definitely going to say the clients are easier because I know more of them will listen to it. But no, in, in all honesty, um, different challenges. And that is a very, very politician answer. But you do, you get different different uh, challenges. Obviously, looking at on the, the coaches and, and the internal side of things, we're looking at a lot of sort of different stuff as to what I would speak with, with, with when I'm speaking to clients one-on-one. -on -one. Um, potentially trying to use some of the same skills, um, but it's uh, they're, both, uh, they're both a bit different. Um, but, it, you know, it comes down to the same thing, of, I think, of trying to help people. And, and uh, you know whether that be potentially a client with the you know with the fitness goals or whatever other goals they might have, or with the the coaching team and the business of you know making that successful. It, it's just trying to support and help as much as possible. So I think it does come back to, to really the same core value of that, if you like. Um, and then yeah, maybe you just have to do it in a slightly different way depending on who you're speaking to. <laughs> No, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, I guess there's a lot of similar skills in that. You, you, you need the same kind of listening skills and problem solving skills, but just in different ways in different formats. How easy or, or difficult is it to actually build an, a team that meaningfully feels like a team when you are all working remotely you know you're, you're so rarely ever in a room together I know you get together sometimes for kind of social things but the norm is that you all work separately in wherever you are yeah so how, how do you deal with the making that feel like a team that's another really good question because as you say it's it, normally we in, in, in say a typical environment where you're all sat around or you're getting that actual face-to-face -face interaction I would say it, it is easier. I don't think, uh, you know, there's no two ways about it. It is easier to build a connection quicker in that in, in environment where you're spending more actual face-to-face -face physical time with each other. So you, you do have to be quite, I think, strategic with it in, in terms of when you're doing it from distance. I think number one is making sure that it, that it doesn't kind of get forgotten about. You know, we're, we're always trying to, where possible, um, with with everyone being situated in different places, um, as you mentioned, have some meetups that that, uh, that sometimes revolve around when when members are there too, like the retreats. But sometimes we we, we just plan something in. We try and do it a couple of times a year, um, where it's just us guys getting together and and just having a chin wag. Really, um, we started a little social group as well. I don't know if Laura mentioned that when she spoke to you because she was. Uh, Actually, the the uh, the head of the we call it the like the, the fun group, <laughs> and uh, this is just a little uh, WhatsApp group that uh, she pop in a little challenge each week. Um, so it's normally something silly, um, and I mean really silly. So you know, sometimes a fitness one like who could do who could hold the plank for the longest. Uh, sometimes. Uh, a non-fitness one <laughs> who can do a Sudoku, you know. Anyway, there's all these sorts of little things um, that uh, just once a week come up and, and, you know, pop it in on a Wednesday. And then uh, people can get involved and uh, we get a bit of a point score going. And I think it, on the last count, it was Ben who was top of that. Um, so my tactic on that was to try, a bit like Rotherham, the football team, just try and participate as often as possible and then accumulate as many points as I could 
um, just by doing it, even if I wasn't necessarily winning each time, um, just keep chipping away. But again, a bit like Rotherham, I fell off. And there were a couple of weeks, like when I was on holiday in the summer, that I forgot to do it, and, and I missed out. And anyway, I think I was sat about mid-table, which is which is better than Rotherham <laughs> at the moment. But it's it was a good thing to do because you know something not necessarily work related, and something that gives us a little thing each week to, to keep going, and and across the the whole team. Because as you, you know, as we said, we've got our coaching team, but we've got the, the sort of marketing, sales and marketing side now as well, um, where we obviously have more regular meetings amongst the coaches, but to be able to reach out to, to them as well. Um, what else have we got? An online social at the end of the month as well. We've been doing that for, for a while. Last Friday of the month, just, uh, just popping on for half an hour or, or an hour. And uh, Laura set up a few games on that. So just these little things to, to try and, yeah, to try and give us all a, all a, a, a bit of a, a boost on that uh, culture, if you like, and, and teamwork. And, um, yeah, it does make a difference because, uh, you know, you don't, you don't want to feel like you're a lone ranger just, uh, you know, uh, plodding, plodding away on the computer, email, phone calls. You know, it's nice to have that interaction as well. Um, so I think that uh, that has made a difference. I, you know, it's certainly made a difference for me. And it's made enough of a difference that I've not felt like I've needed to, exact, for example, to go to a co-working space. You know, it was something I considered, um, uh, especially at the start. Um, but, you know, I've, I, it's not something I need to do. I've, I've, you know, I've, my partner work, doesn't work at home, so I, I have the, the whole place to myself all day. You know, it's very quiet. I don't need it from that point of view. But, you know, I did consider, oh, maybe we do need a bit, you know, to have a bit more interaction. But as the team's grown and we've brought in these sort of, little, I mean, they're silly things, really, but they all add up and they're actually quite important. And um, that's uh, that's helped a lot. And I've never, I've never needed to. So uh, maybe that, maybe that's a good sign. Well, I think given that you, you said you, one of the things that appealed about this job was that, it was being part of a team. Mm. I can see why feeling part, genuinely part of a team, is really important. So it's it's good to know that that is is there and is being fostered. I mean, I'm not at all surprised because of the, the interactions I've had with various members of the Trinity staff. But it's just really good to hear about the workings behind the scenes that we don't necessarily we're not conscious of when we're just dialing in for our 15 minute chat or whatever. So. It's nice to hear about. So thank you for that. Um, just in terms of your your sort of normal working day, what does that look like? And I don't mean just when I say a normal working day, I don't mean just the, the working part of it. But how how does your normal day go? Are you a morning person? Are you an evening person? Is it get out and climb a mountain before you start work? Or is that something that waits till later? Or how? How does your day look? Well, I'm not a morning person. No, <laughs> it'd be coffee before anything. That's that's the first one. Um, now, I to be fair, when I was on 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 the Gold Coast, because they don't have any, they don't turn the clocks there. They, they don't have any daylight savings. So in the summer, it's light at like half four in the morning. And our gym used to open at five, and that was my, my busiest time was between like five and seven in the morning. You know, Monday to Friday, that was like prime time before people had to get ready to go to work. So for a long time, I was getting up at half four. Now, um, that's uh, changed somewhat <laughs> since moving to Spain. I mean, the supermarket doesn't even open here till nine o'clock. Like, you know, there'd be no, there'd be no need to, to get up. So... I have a gentle alarm at about eight o'clock. Sometimes I, I, I shouldn't snooze it. It's a terrible habit, but sometimes I do for like 10 minutes. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm my brekkie and then just, just, you know, warm up with my coffee, ease into the day. I'm always been more of a, an afternoon, evening exerciser, always. And, uh, I think that is something that is, it's almost built into your DNA. Like, you know, people very much like morning exercises or afternoon, evening exercises. I can do a session in the morning, 
but not before, not as not first thing, like not before breakfast, not like, you know, have a banana and then go and lift weights. I think Rob does that. He does most of his workouts like at the crack of dawn. Not for me. I, you know, I like to, I like to have some of the day under my belt as well, because, you know, of course, I'm not doing anything that physical. <laughs> Everything that I'm doing every day sat down. Um, I feel like I like to get more than half of my day done. So if I'm, say, say I'm clocking eight hours, I like to get to about five or six. Then I can go and do my workout and then I can come back and do another hour or two. So I like to get over that, that halfway, the little mental, like I've done half my day or more than half my day. So that's normally about three, four-ish. I'll go to uh, to the gym and um, I'll do my workout. And then I say, I'll come back, I'll do another hour or two. And one thing with, I suppose it is the Spanish lifestyle, but arguably in Australia, I didn't eat dinner until about half eight, nine o'clock anyway, because just because of the nature of the job. I was, I was mainly doing splits there. So I better clarify that. I wasn't working from half four in the morning till nine o'clock at night. <laughs> I was doing till about 10, 11 in the morning. I'd come back. It was very Spanish, actually. I'd come back and have a nap, like a siesta, because I needed to. And then I'd go back and do another three or four hours in the afternoon. Um, so I was always eating quite late, late-ish dinners anyway. But here, um, yeah, that's just... I mean, my partner works till six, so she don't get back till... Um, half six, then she's got her own exercise to do. So by the time, you know, we've got something sort of for dinner, it's going to be, well, on a good, well, earliest, it's going to be after eight, but normally about half eight, nine. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we'll have an hour in front of the telly, something on Netflix, and then start again. <laughs> right. So what, what do you do for fun when you're not doing working and working out? not saying that work and working out aren't fun because obviously they are but when you're not doing those what what else do you do well my main thing is playing sport because yeah i mean i do i've always loved working out obviously but is it fun i suppose i do get enjoyment from it you know it's not like i've ever had to force myself to do it like i love doing it but I don't know. I'm not like having a laugh and joke when I'm doing it. I'm, you know, I'm getting the enjoyment, I guess, in a different way. But I'll um, I'll play football and I play paddle as well, which is very popular in, in Spain and in um, South America. It's a bit of a hybrid of sort of tennis and squash, um, where okay. it's on a small court. You always play in pairs. So, so to me, this is more fun because I'm doing it with other people. Like football, I'm playing seven aside. You know, so there's. 13 other guys there it's a you know it's a lot more interactive it's a lot it's a lot a lot more fun uh, same with paddle you know that's going to be with three mates because we're both going to be playing pairs so you know it's a bit more social we might have a coffee after yeah i'm not doing that after the gym on my own <laughs> cheers cheers in myself like patting myself on the back well done <laughs> good workout <laughs> um so sport is a big one for me to, 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 to have fun. That ticks off my cardio as well, which is brilliant because I, I, whenever I go to the gym, that's when weights, but I wouldn't want to be spending a lot of time pounding out uh, time on the treadmill or uh, rower or anything like that. Um, and um, yeah, that, that's what we base it around really. Even if it's not sort of an official working out day like we might go and do a hike or you know there's like there's always some there's normally it's always some sort of activity involved um which is good because it'll often involve like a big lunch after especially if it's a sunday so <laughs> we need to keep that calorie burn going the whole the whole time okay what about the balance no. um so what's your favorite part of your job I think um, seeing results, I would say, and, and, and again, going back to helping and um, supporting either members or other coaches, um, seeing the uh, seeing the results from from that help and support, really, because you know that's 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 what I'm after. That's what we're after. Um, so seeing people becoming more empowered, you know, and whether that be a certain amount of weight loss or just having more control over the day-to-day -day life or, you know, if it's, uh, if, if, 
it's a coach, you know, potentially uh, having been able to help them, uh, in, you know, in a certain situation. Um, so I think that that empowerment and the results is, is the big one because ultimately that's that's what I'm trying to help uh, people achieve through you know through through me supporting either a, a coaching or in a in this this team leader capacity. Um, so that's kind of a, a tick then. That's like a sign of a job well done. Um, and, uh, and, and then, you know, you've had an impact, which is, you know, obviously really rewarding. And, uh, and then, you know, you're making like a genuine difference. Fair enough. Um, what are you most proud of in what you've achieved so far? What is the, the bit that you're kind of, you know, that you really sort of look at and go, yeah, that was good. I'm, I'm really, I'm proud of myself for doing that. Oh, it's a good one as well. I mean, there's lots of moments. It, it, I think it'd be hard to pick a single one. I think it, it's going to be a similar answer to the last question, but it just generally, I, I, I suppose most proud of, of being able to help more people, if anything, and see see more people, you know, more members become empowered, obviously because we've got a bigger team and therefore we've been able to help support more people, help more people get, get results. Um, and then... Yeah, with, with, within a, a bit of it, it's sort of like a bit of a snowball effect. And then within having a bigger internal team as well, I've, I've obviously been able to, to help sort of pass on my knowledge and experience and, and things like that to, to, to other coaches as well. Uh, you know, rather than just say a single coach, because now we've got a coaching team, that's become, you know, that's had a sort of a greater uh, impact too. So I, I think the, yeah, the pride comes from things kind of growing in, in that regard, um, that we, we've not just kind of stopped at a point and said, I oh, know this is pretty good, you know, and again, like giving ourselves a pat on the back and said, oh, you know, nice one, we're helping like, you know, so many women now, or we've got oh, so many coaches, oh, like, this is brilliant, like, uh, well done us. It's, you know, keeping pushing it forward. Um, how, can, how can we do more of that? Um, and, and how can we do it better? And um, not by saying by no means, not saying we've got it perfect, as Rob's always saying, progress, not perfection. But it's, it is, you know, it's progressing and it's definitely progressed in the time since I started. Um, mm. So, so that's, yeah, that is, that is quite, uh, that is yeah, quite something, I suppose. Fair enough. And then the flip side of that. So what's the hardest part of what you do? Well, I think... I've always been on my toes for a change, I suppose. There's always new things coming up. There's always new challenges. There's always new, yeah, things to uh, to work out a solution to. And again, whether that be uh, something to do with the programme, whether it be something to do internally, whether it be something to do how can we, yeah, do something better that's, that, that's going to, you know, provide, I, I suppose, a better framework for more people to, again, Come back to that empowerment for the more people to get the results. Um, it's, it, it's certainly not in my role and position one where, if, if you like, kind of just like a, a cruisy, um, like you know, every week's going to be the same and not much is going to change. It's 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 not the one because there's always stuff coming up. <laughs> but like that's not a bad thing. I I really enjoy it. It's um, it's. It, because all of those are opportunities, you know, it, it, it's one of them, it's all, all, all framing it or how you want to view it, isn't it? Um, and there's certainly always plenty of scope for, yeah, improvements, more success. Uh, and again, for, for, for members and, and for ourselves, you know, we're always looking at um, how, yeah, how we can be more effective, in, in, you know, again, for, for everyone involved. So yeah, I think the hardest thing is 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 just um, I don't. I, but again, I won't say it's hard. You know, keeping going because it's it's like right, okay, these things are on the list. Let's get them. You know, let get them implemented or get them sorted. There's always going to be more things coming on the list, but um, that's okay. You know, it's that's okay. I think you know you want that. I think to a certain extent, as long as the list doesn't get you know like. It stays about the same size. If it starts to keep growing and growing and growing and, and more's going on there than getting ticked off, 
I think uh, that that would probably be harder. That would be more stressful. But if we can get a good amount ticked off and, 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 and more stuff's coming on, then uh, then that's always okay. So, yeah. Is there a lot of homework with this? I'm, I'm just thinking about the fact that there's always new research. There's always new, sometimes it's new sort of fad diets or fad exercises, or sometimes it is new sort of groundbreaking understanding of how hormones work or or how certain exercises work or whatever but there's always new information and Rob and Ben always say you know incredibly well informed and they they have lots of stuff at their fingertips um in terms of nutrition advice and and weight advice and so on and so forth but is there an element of your job that involves keeping tabs on all that or is that that somebody else's responsibility in the team to feed that in or is it just a personal interest thing that you leave coaches to pursue that if they're interested but otherwise you know they know enough and that's okay yeah i think it's definitely across the whole team it's not someone's specific role for that because everyone's picking up as you said there's such a wealth of new research always coming in new information new studies um I think it'd be silly, really, to say, look, that's your, you know, that's one person's job just to keep on, on, on tabs of all that, especially when we've got the team the size we have now. Um, so what we what we do have is a knowledge sharing group on, we, we use Slack for most of our internal communications. And one of the, the, the channels, I think they're called on Slack rather than groups that we have on there is specifically just for knowledge sharing. So if anyone comes across any new research, whether it be about, hormones or a particular supplement or um, anything, anything to do with nutrition, even exercise, um, they'll post it in there and then we can all have a look at it, all have a discussion about it and all learn from it. And uh, and that's certainly one of the advantages of having a bigger team because you're not trying to keep on top of all this sort of stuff yourself. Um, and then that can be collated and then potentially Rob or Ben can feed that back to, to the members via a coaching call for example so it's a much more effective way of doing it and there's always stuff coming through that, yeah you know there's always a new supplement or a, a new uh, take on something so you, 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 yeah you've got to be um, you, yeah I mean open to it and, 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 and listening in and uh, and even sometimes it will come from members as well something will be mentioned uh, by a member in, a, in one of their check-ins or one of their reviews, they'll, you know, bring something to our attention. So now it's not just the team of, yeah, 12, 15 of us, however many of us there are now, but it's also the hundreds of members that we're listening out to. If, something, if something's raised there, that's, oh, that's a bit different, or that sounds new, or let's make sure that we, that we get on top of it, that we educate ourselves about it, and that, uh, yeah, we can integrate that as and where it's uh, needed. Excellent. That's really good. Yeah, it's kind of kind of reassuring. I mean, one of the things I liked most about the programme was that I felt there was so much conflicting information out there. And so my experience so far has always been that whatever you ask about, you get a considered response that makes sense, that fits within the programme in a way that doesn't contradict anything you've been told previously or or conflict with anything we're trying to achieve and I've always found that really reassuring so it's quite nice to hear about how that happens sort of semi-organically within the organization mm. but it's 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 quite interesting to hear how that information sort of comes in and and then comes back out again to us and and among among the team so thank you that's uh, that's really interesting um what is it that makes you and I think I might know because you've kind of said but what is it that makes you keep showing up when because you know not every day is full of sunshine and roses although you're every day is full of sunshine for you because you live in Valencia <laughs> <laughs> but maybe not roses so what is it when when things are for some reason are harder going than usual what is it that keeps you keeps you going yeah I've, well I, I don't want to mention the same thing again I'll try and think of a bit of a different take on it because obviously the, the again getting the results for, for people is is a massive driver um, and, and helping people. But potentially, what else would keep me showing up? 
yeah, I mean, I, I, again, it's tied to a little bit of what I've already mentioned, but just always the potential to make things better. Um, mm. And to, you know, to internally and externally. Um, I mean, I, I, yeah, I think there's just still, I've seen a lot of change, of course, over the, say, coming up to three year period from the, the size of the team, the program itself as well. Uh, not so much the fundamentals, but the, 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 you know, we've been able to add so much more content, uh, more specific content about, you know, in certain areas around things like injuries, for example. I think what just keep me turning up is that I know that there's so much more potential still to go. Is that it's, it's a, a you know, it's, it's not bad now, is it? <laughs> like, it's good. Yeah. We get a lot of good results. But again, it, you know, we're not saying that it's, it's perfection, you know, it, it's always room for progress there. And there's always potential to, to, to make things even better than they are. And, um, you know, we've, we've got a list of things right now, actually, for, for next year that we're saying, you know, this is somewhere that we can, the, 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 the scope on, that we can make it even better. Um, so, and I don't think that ever stops in, you know, whatever business you're in uh, or whatever role you're in, if, it, if, it's, if it's one where, you know, yeah, it's, it, you've got some input on, 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 on kind of the actual development of that, um, there's always going to be opportunities, always opportunities to, to improve things and make it even better. So I think, yeah, the, the, the potential is something that's quite exciting that keeps me going. Um, regardless, because I know that there's a potential layer to affect even more people in a positive way. Mm. I think that, it, from what I, I I know of them from talking to them, I think you share that with Ben and Rob. I think that's something you all have very strongly in common. This kind of this drive to improve things and not ever be complacent and always sort of. It, and with them, it's that engineering problem solving background of sort of. Let's find a problem and then solve it. And they get excited by that challenge in a way that other people might be like, oh, God, not another one. <laughs> but like you, they seem to be driven by the fact that there's always potential for more and, and better. And and they're excited by that. And I see that in you as well. So I can I can see why that's a good fit. Um, so if you had to get across just one thing about the Trinity programme, that would help people succeed. So in all your experience of coaching and coaching coaches and all of that, if there was one thing, one principle that you thought was the most sort of helpful thing that people could embrace, what would it be? Well, don't worry if you have a bad week, <laughs> like we all have them. <laughs> it's, it's not a problem. It's, um, it comes back down to mindset, really. I think that's, that's the big one. And, I do, I do sort of understand the point of view of one, you know, say one bad week or one, one week that's not gone so well, having a, having an effect because of course, you know, we, we want to do well. No one wants to, to feel like they, 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 you know, they've not done well. But in the grand scheme of things, if, you know, 52 weeks in a year, I think we're all allowed a couple of crap weeks. Like, we can't, we can't, it, it sort of comes back to the, the, the perfection thing again. If we aim for like, we can aim for 52 out of 52, but, you know, it, you'd be doing very well to, to uh, you know, everyone has a bad week. You know, world leaders have a bad week, celebrities have a bad week, Olympic athletes have a bad week. You know, it's not going to be um, a perfect week, 52 out of 52. So I think it's just having a, that, that mindset of it doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't matter if, and it's probably a bad in inverted commas week because actually there's probably stuff, if we actually look at it, that's, that's gone all right in that week um, or, or certainly things that can be taken from it. Even if you reckon it's been a completely rubbish one, there's probably still a lot of stuff you can take from that. That that so it's in my mind a hundred percent that is still a positive week as long as you take things from it. So mm -hmm. arguably you could you know you can turn that around and say there's never a bad week because even if you have the worst week ever, you can probably take at least one thing and say you know I can tweak that next time or I'll not do that again 
or you know I, I know I could have done this and it would have been a bit better so so that's how you can turn that around but if you're going in with that that mindset then you, you're always going to be pushing forward as well um, so you can use them weeks positively and then all your other ones your 50 51 weeks that are good weeks well that's going to be more than enough to see progress anyway um, so I think yeah not not worrying about that and um, and just yeah keep them pushing forward regardless and you can always use that anyway in a positive manner yeah I think um, I think this sounds similar to your approach with the team challenges uh, which I'm now going to call officially the Rotherham approach uh, that actually turning up and and taking part is enough as consistently as you can rather than always feeling you have to be the top of the table um, and if you can end up somewhere mid division by the end of the season then that's a result so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm taking that analogy and I'm going to run with it. Yeah. Um, so I've, I've definitely, definitely had a bit of a Rotherham week, but uh, that's all good. It's fine. Okay, so uh, now we're going to do the, the quick fire round because that's fun. Um, if you could only eat one food or meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Or steak, I think. Just steak? Steak with stuff or just steak? Probably with a glass of red as well. <laughs> Am I allowed to okay. say that? <laughs> oh yeah, totally, totally. You can have whatever you like. Um, if you could choose one thing that you could eat or drink of as as much as you want, and it would have no negative consequences, what would it be? Ooh, um, probably meat again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not much of a sweet tooth, so okay. I'm not. Yeah, I'm much more savoury really right. yeah but not not snacks or pizza or nibbles or just just meat i'm not that bothered about that stuff i'd rather just have a really good quality piece of meat or really good fish something you know okay top draw all right fair enough well big on the protein um of all the activity you do What's your favourite move or type of exercise or lift or whatever? Um, well, very stereotypical to say bench press, isn't it? But it, it probably is the first exercise I've been right. every single week. And I always do my right. chest session on a Monday, so it must be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What's your least favourite? Um, uh, maybe something like a calf raise, actually. Because it's a different kind of burn that. It's one of them that you have to accumulate, which is not that nice. And I do find with something like a calf raise, you can keep pushing for a lot. You know, you sort of get somewhere like a shoulder press and you just can't, you know, you can't push much more. You, you, like, you, you almost get to a sticking point and that's it. But with something like a calf raise, like the pain sort of starts, the fatigue starts. But, you know, all you need to do is like push your toes up. So you can keep going, you can keep going, and you can keep building up that burn even more until it's like quite unpleasant. Yeah, I don't understand why anybody would want to do that, but <laughs> hey, you do you. Um, okay, uh, when you were little, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, footballer, hundred percent. Oh, okay. Have you have you said goodbye to that dream, or are you still hanging on in there? No, I, I've said goodbye. No, I mean, no, I've said goodbye to it. I'm not. I'm not hanging on. <laughs> what do you wish you could do more of? More time outside. In all honesty, it's um, yeah. I love being outside, and that that's one thing with, of course, being desk based. I try and be in the brightest room we have. Have the window open as much as I can. But it's still not quite the same as being outside. Um, mm. So I make sure that I do it at the weekend. I'm outside as much as I can to sort of balance that out a bit. But I'd, I'd, I'd love to be outside even more. Okay. Um, what would you like to do less of? Uh, sleep. <laughs> that's so. That's so. It's such a bad answer to say. I probably have too much. But I sleep. A lot. <laughs> I think I sleep too much. I, like, I went to bed last night at like half ten, and today I got up at like quarter past eight. 
like that's almost 10 hours i shouldn't need i shouldn't need that much but yeah i do i sleep a lot that that seems to be like my default of like how much i need like i was tired when i got up this morning so maybe i need to yeah review that and see if i can find a better way to have less sleep or maybe it's just that when you're active, you're really active and you need a lot of rest. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe. Uh, I'm, I'm trying not to be envious of you because <laughs> no. that sounds like heaven. <laughs> <laughs> if you couldn't do this, so if you weren't working for Trinity, um, what would you do instead? Well, I'd definitely still be in health and fitness. I would, I, I, just, I suppose, I'd find another, another role um, within that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's probably something similar, something that had the, the business development side as well as the as well as the training side. I think that's the, the ideal hybrid, really. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't think I'd go and study something brand new or anything like that. You'd like to see a career ch- change in your path. I'm just trying to think how you could combine the business development, the training, and the kind of personal connection. And also the being outside. Um, so you need some kind of park ranger, fitness instructor, team hybrid thing. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you and Robin Ben can put your heads together and you'll come up with something. Oh, I can take my laptop outside, but I like having a nice big screen. I have my monitor here. <laughs> yeah. And it's, yeah. it's all right for a while. Um, but, you know, not all day. But I, I could, I should, and I could do that more, actually. Because I get very comfortable in my chair with my big monitor. <laughs> and I, we do have a nice little balcony here, and I could sit on there quite easily with my laptop. But the chair's not quite as comfy, and then I'm on my laptop. But I could, I should actually. <laughs> there you go. Right. Well, thank you ever so much, Dave, for um, all those really interesting insights into you and what makes you tick, and, um, and behind the scenes at Trinity as well. Uh, so I'm going to say thanks a lot it's been lovely to meet you properly and uh, say goodbye yes thank you